G'day there, my name is Vince and this is my first attempt at a little video. Uh, I wanted to discuss today a, a program that I discovered. It's a uh, software KVM program and it's called Barrier. Now in case you're not sure what this is, uh, Barrier is actually a fork of an even older open source uh, app called Synergy. Uh, some of you may have heard of Synergy before. Uh, I used to use it many moons ago when I used to have two desktop systems on my desk at the same time. Uh, what would happen was I would have uh, two desktops and a monitor for each, but I would be able to control both the desktops with a single keyboard and mouse. Uh, but I eventually got rid of one of those desktops and I haven't used Synergy in a while, uh, perhaps even uh, 10 or more years. In that time, however, Synergy has become a proprietary product. Uh, it's made by a company called uh, Seamless now and uh, it costs uh, $29 for a license. Now, the source code for the old Synergy uh, app um, is actually still available uh, here. Um, however, I don't think it's uh, been actively developed. Um, and there are perhaps some security issues as well, uh, particularly with the availability of encryption. I think that the uh, seamless company that now make or sell the app um, disable the function unless you pay them. Um, also, you'll also find Synergy uh, still in some uh, repos of uh, some Linux distributions. Fortunately, however, someone in the open source world, uh, this person called Debauchi, uh, has made a fork of Synergy and they've called it Barrier and it looks like they've continued to develop it and this is what we'll focus on today but I'm just going to get back to this a bit later because firstly what I'd like to do is um, explain what a KVM is um, so a KVM what it is is it provides the ability to control multiple computers um, with a single set of keyboard, video monitor, and mouse, hence the acronym KVM. Now, in this diagram, your keyboard, monitor, and mouse are connected to the computer on the right, and you're controlling the computer on the right. And what happens is, um, typically a KVM is a hardware box that you can get where all these computers are plugged in and there would be a toggle switch in that uh, hardware box where you could toggle all of these uh, lines over to another computer uh, for example the one on the left and uh, so this is great if you needed to control multiple machines um, that are close to you uh, but you can only control them one at a time. Um, now, this is also something that can be achieved through software, and that's where a software KVM like Barrier uh, becomes relevant. Uh, this Barrier app actually enables you to control computers in a similar fashion to this, but over a network connection. Uh, now, I'm aware that there are other solutions around uh, that are out there to control other machines, such as VNC or TeamViewer, but this barrier application allows us to directly control another machine rather than sharing a screen in the window, which is what VNC and TeamViewer do, uh, because uh, those applications can sometimes come with performance disadvantages and anyone who's used VNC or TeamViewer uh, can tell you that sometimes there's a bit of lag 
uh, between what you do and what happens on the screen. And that depends a lot on your uh, network connection, whether it's local or over the internet. <clears throat> now, uh, Barrier uses much less network, ban network bandwidth because it's only transferring the mouse and keyboard inputs and outputs. Uh, rather than having to transfer an entire picture of your screen uh, over the network. So therefore, uh, Barrier is much, much snappier to use um, for direct control of another machine. Um, before we start also, I'm just going to show you the setup I have. Uh, this little picture that I took. Um, you can see I've got my desktop just here in the background. Um, I've got two monitors. Uh, this is the one that you've been seeing on screen at the moment. And just to my right is a notebook that I use uh, for testing purposases. I test Linux distros on it. Uh, so that, you notice that's sitting just to the right of this monitor uh, that you've been looking at on screen. The uh, desktop screen that you've been looking at um, so far in this video uh, is running Arco Linux, which is Arch-based with uh, the i3 window manager and the laptop screen which I, I've just switched to is uh, running uh, Netrunner which is a Debian based distribution which uh, I've been testing out. Now uh, switching back to my desktop uh, what's great about this application barrier is that it is uh, multi-platform it's available in the distro uh, in the repos of many of the major distros. It's in the AUR for Arch. Um, it's in Debian. It's uh, in Kali Linux. It's in Ubuntu, Raspbian, Void Linux. Um, it's also available as a Snap and a Flatpak. Uh, but what's also great is that it's available for Windows and Mac. Um, so you can actually control Windows machines and Mac machines uh, and vice versa. Let's have a look at the installation process. Uh, as I said in Arch, it's in the AUR. Uh, to install it on my desktop here, I'd bring up uh, the software center, which is PAMAC. And we will search for Barrier. There it is there, top of the list. Uh, I've actually got it installed, but otherwise you would usually click the Build button and it should install it after you enter your password. The other way of installing it, of course, is via the command line, uh, which you can do using your favorite uh, AUI helper, which in my case is yay. S and barrier. I'll leave uh, all these this information uh, down below uh, in the video notes. Uh, but I won't install it again because I've already got it. And switching over to my laptop, uh, probably in this Netrunner distro, um, which is Debian based, um, the best way to get it would be through the software center in KDE which is uh, discover uh, and we'll just search for barrier there it is uh, again, I've actually already got it installed here on the laptop as well. Alternatively, you can go to uh, bring up a terminal and run sudo apt update, run that command to update your repositories and then sudo apt install barrier. And again, I've got it already installed so I won't uh, install it again here. Next, what we need to do is set up the program to be used. Um, on my back to my desktop, we're going to look at 
opening the program called Barrier. Now, the way that this program works and the way that it differs from uh, a hardware KVM, which we'll have a look at again here, is that in a hardware KVM you have both the monitor, keyboard and mouse attached and you switch all three over. In a software KVM like Barrier, you uh, still keep looking at the monitor that you are of the computer that you're going to be using, but the software will switch the mouse and keyboard inputs over to whichever computer uh, you would like to have focus. Um, and the way this works is this, it'll become more clear as we go ahead. Uh, first of all we've got a welcome screen and we are when we first open the app and you just select your language you can have a bit of a read uh, of what it's about and what you'll need to do here is there now select whether the computer you're, in, you're setting it up is going to be a server or a client. Uh, the server computer is going to be the computer that has the mouse and keyboard physically attached. The client computer is the so-called remote computer which will um, be able to use the keyboard and mouse from your initial server computer. So in my case the server uh, for me is going to be my desktop where my mouse and keyboard are attached um, and the client is going to be my laptop which is sitting over here to my right. So for my desktop I'm going to click server and click finish. Once you get to this screen um, you, there's a couple of things that still need to be done uh, and something you'll need to take note of. Um, you'll need to take note of your IP address and well you kind of need the SSL fingerprint but um, you can leave it on screen here and compare it later on when you bring up the screen in uh, the other computer. Um, now to complete the setup um, we're going to switch over to my laptop and again let's bring up the barrier app it is and again we'll click through English is my language this time around because uh, I'll be controlling this laptop via the keyboard and mouse from my desktop uh, we can use client as the setup uh, and what I found uh, with using this app is that there's an auto config option but I haven't found that works very well. Um, maybe it's a bug or maybe it's because I'm doing something wrong. If anybody actually knows please leave me a comment uh, down below please because uh, I'd like to know. Anyway so what I found uh, works for me is just to manually enter my IP address for my desktop server machine uh, that we noted down earlier. So we'll unclick auto config and we'll uh, click uh, or type in the server address, which for me was 192.168.1.8. Uh, next, before we move on from here, there's something else we need to take down. Uh, which is the screen name for the uh, laptop. Um, I think this auto populated this name for me called Netrunner. I can't remember if this was the host name that I made the computer or not, but I'm not sure. But anyway, you'll need to use this uh, screen name. It's only relevant to this program, so I don't think it matters exactly what it is, but you'll need it uh, a bit later on. Now we actually need to return back to the desktop and this is where I'll show you something that is quite cool. Uh, we click on configure server and here in this little diagram is how we'll actually manage our computers. Um, you'll see that we have the server computer located centrally here and each little square in this grid can actually be a computer you can control and there are a total of 15 squares in this grid including the central computer. Now to add a new computer 
that is my laptop, uh, we drag the icon here over to one of the grids. Now, because my laptop is to the right of my desktop, well, well my desktop monitor anyway, um, I want to actually put it to the right here. So it's like a spatial rep representation of um, what I want to do. And what we need to do is double click and uh, put in the screen name of the uh, laptop, which is what it was showing me before. And in my case, it was called Netrunner. And click OK. Now, bear with me here, we're nearly done. Uh, we click OK. Now, what's left to be done is we click Start on both machines. This will start the uh, service and it should connect. Let's see how this goes. We'll click Start on the desktop. And we'll click Start on the laptop. Now on the laptop you'll see that uh, it displays the fingerprint of the uh, SSL uh, certificate that uh, is showing on my desktop and you just click accept yes we trust this one and there we are it looks like we are connected uh, this window here on the desktop you can actually close um, there is actually a system tray icon which you can't see because it's on my other monitor uh, that remains open and it will display and show that you're connected uh, and it'll stay running in the background so we can actually close this well I'll leave it here for the moment but you can actually close this and it'll all still work right I'm back after a little bit of uh, troubleshooting uh, what you'll need to look for on both the applications that are open on both the machines is that barrier is running this little message on both my desktop machine and my laptop machine uh, needs to be showing uh, that way you know it's working what I found I had to do uh, was that I had to start and stop here uh, the application a couple of times on uh, both the desktop and my laptop before it fully recognized each other uh, but since then it's been working flawlessly and now I can show you how this works if you were to follow my cursor here on my desktop and I'm going to move it slowly over to the right hand side you will see it magically appear on my laptop um, so now I am actually controlling the cursor on my laptop with the mouse that's connected to my desktop and you can do anything you like you can um, let's bring up uh, any sort of application uh, you like maybe we'll just bring up a, another terminal and you can actually uh, start also typing on the other computer with the keyboard that's connected to my desktop there you go command not found uh, fantastic and from here on my laptop if I was to move the cursor back over to the left hand side it will magically reappear on my desktop and you can go about then using your desktop again uh, if I was to bring up a configure servant again now what you can do also is you can actually configure this however you like uh, what I could have done before was I could have made uh, the uh, my laptop the server and my desktop uh, one of the clients anywhere located around here and then I could actually then control my desktop with my laptop like a remote control I could lean back 
watch a movie on my desktop with a big monitor and still control it uh, with my uh, laptop that could be on my lap. It is a very, very flexible program. So I can actually orientate the remote machine anywhere I like around the grid. Um, and I'll hit OK. Now you may need to hit reload once you've done that. Whichever part of the screen you've decided uh, it will go to, it will uh, then move the mouse over to the next computer. Finally, uh, once you're done, you uh, can then just quit the application by right clicking on the tray icon and clicking quit. Thank you for watching my uh, first video. If you've spotted any mistakes uh, or have any comments or suggestions, please feel free to leave them down below.